They say it's not the crime that creates trouble, it's the cover-up. But sometimes it's both, as with the pedophilia epidemic in the Catholic Church and the attempt to hide it, and now a narrower but deeply troubling scandal at a distinguished American university. What kind of person knows about the abuse of children and does not do everything to stop it? Well, tonight, fingers are pointing at a man millions long considered a symbol of decency. Here's ABC's Dan Harris. Tonight, an extraordinary show of support for Joe Paterno, the embattled Penn State legend. His house mobbed by hundreds of students, linking arms, chanting, and singing. For the glory of the state. We're Penn State. I'm proud of you, folks. I'm proud of you. I've always been proud of you. We're proud of you, too. We love you, too. That Joe Paterno is fighting for his job tonight is an epic reversal of fortune for a man who built Penn State into a national brand, charging to victory under the motto of success with honor, a man now possibly about to be cast aside by the very institution he transformed, all for what he did or did not do when alerted to child sex abuse in a case that has parents all over America asking, could my child be abused without anybody ever telling me? The saga started with this man, Jerry Sandusky, once Paterno's top defensive coach, considered a possible heir apparent, a community pillar who founded a charity to work with at-risk kids, a position prosecutors now say Sandusky used as a hunting ground for vulnerable victims, eight young boys. Reach out to young people, uh, trying to motivate them, to mentor them. According to prosecutors, Penn State appears to have had multiple opportunities to stop Sandusky, like when two boys came forward in 1998 to say Sandusky had fondled them in the team showers. Campus police even eavesdropped on a conversation between Sandusky and one boy's mother, a scene that mother recently described to local newspaper reporter Sarah Gannam. He admitted to taking the shower. He admitted to some extent something bad happened. Um, he asked her for forgiveness. He said, I know I probably won't get it from you. And then he said, I wish I were dead. But Sandusky was never charged. And then in 2002, a junior staffer on the team, this man, Mike McQuarrie, said he saw Sandusky sexually assaulting a 10-year-old boy in the team showers. McQuarrie took it to Joe Paterno, and Paterno took it to a pair of college administrators. However, those administrators never told police, and neither did Paterno. Meanwhile, Jerry Sandusky allegedly went on abusing. Unless people are directly confronted with something, many times they won't report it because they want to protect their world. Sandusky was only brought down when a 15-year-old boy spoke up. It's remarkable. It took a very brave person, like the mom said, say she's very proud of her son because he had to stand up to this giant, this football god. While the two college administrators who failed to notify police have now been arrested and charged, prosecutors say Paterno is in the clear. We love you, John. But even though he may not be hauled in front of a court of law, this is a man who for decades famously stressed ethics, building Penn State's small football program into a colossus without one cheating scandal, a living legend to whom they've even erected a monument here. But many people now say Paterno failed to live up to his own standards in this case. Today, just minutes before Paterno's first news conference since the scandal was about to start, it was suddenly canceled. Today's press conference cannot be held and will not be rescheduled. He doesn't have any responsibility to talk to people about this. But then we learned that Paterno actually wanted to speak and that he was furious, in fact, that it was canceled. And I was hoping I was going to be able to answer them today. But we'll try to do it soon, as soon as we can. Can't do it today. His son denying reports in the New York Times that his father is about to be fired. There's been no contact about anything to do with anybody stepping down. That's all we have really at this time. I mean, I mean, Meanwhile, a former Paterno player, Matt Millen, broke down on ESPN. I get mad. And it's, uh, if we can't protect our kids, we as a society are pathetic. Tonight, after the Penn State students were done rallying in front of Joe Paterno's home, Joe Paterno! they moved onto the campus. Do you think he lived up to his own code of ethics on this one? 
it could come back that maybe Joe did something wrong, and, and that's something we're going to have to accept and we're going to have to live with. As they sang, members of the Penn State Board of Trustees were meeting to discuss the fate of Joe Paterno. ABC News has learned a decision about whether Paterno will get to keep his job could be made in the next 24 to 48 hours. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in State College, Pennsylvania.